Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Cecil has outlined the reasons for a 36 billion rand write-down at Secunda. Terence Screamer joins me to speak about the development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this big impairment? Well, you know, Cecil's on a, a trajectory of trying to transition from being a very carbon intensive business to, to decarbonize over the next number of years and by 2050 they want to be a, a net zero company. Now that's a big, big ask for a company or a facility like Secunda, which has been built on coal. It's a coal to liquids uh, facility, produces fuels and chemicals in an integrated value chain using technology that was uh, it's a lot of proprietary technology, but technology that was developed in Germany and perfected in South Africa and really was in response in those years to uh, oil sanctions and uh, needing to find a way to keep South Africa wet during apartheid. It's a very controversial history, Cecil has, but it's a business that's, that, um, that wants to transition and find a, a new pathway that's going to be aligned to a carbon constrained world. And it set a 30% carbon reduction by 2030. This was initially, uh, it was initially much lower, but was criticized heavily that it needed to do a lot more because Secunda is one of the biggest single site emitters in the world. And it's uh, sort of pushed the button on trying to get this done. But in the process, there's a misalignment uh, between the solutions uh, that are available that they can really book and, uh, w and uh, what the reality of the decarbonisation window closing in terms of that 30%. And so they've basically had to say that uh, under the current system, under what they know in terms of what gas supply they've got, what coal reduction there's going to be, and in terms of other financial metrics, metrices that have changed, they've had to reduce what uh, the or cap the production at Secunda from 2030 onwards at 6.7 million tonnes. That's more than a million tonnes less than what they've produced at their normal historical run rate. So there's a lot of background to this, but it's basically uh, trying to match their decarbonisation commitment of 30%. And, f and if they can't match that by keeping production up, they have to actually turn down production. What does this mean for Secunda? Well, for Secunda, it's a major change. I mean, it basically ma means ultimately the fuel business, which, we was, which was built on the fuel business, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is going to become less and less cash generative. The chemical business uh, still has a, a life, and they say that as a facility, 2050 uh, is still the useful life of Secunda under what the given parameters but at a lower uh, sort of production rate um, and therefore lower profitability um, if nothing else changes. Now there are a number of initiatives that are underway, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's looking at ways to keep that facility operating at the sort of 7.5 million tonne plus type level, that's its uh, historic uh, sort of uh, production levels. It hasn't been producing that recently because they've had other issues particularly around coal supply, but basically to reduce coal use from 40 million tonnes a year to 30 million tonnes, but to close that gap using more gas, uh, using energy efficiency, using maybe biomass, uh, um, and, and you know, basically they're having to find whether they can plug that gap. And if they can't, as I said, they have to reduce the non plate. So they say really that's the worst case scenario and they feel they will find some of these solutions. Now the big uh, agenda items definitely finding additional gas. Now we know that they're on this sort of plateau at the moment in terms of gas supply out of their Mozambique, southern Mozambique production fields. But there is exploration underway there and they have made some recent finds that could help boost, well one, extend the plateau beyond uh, to 2028 because it was initially earlier than that and possibly beyond, but they're looking for gas to take it even further. I think the big change is that they were looking to supplement coal potentially using liquefied natural gas, and that would be imported from around the world, regasified uh, either at Secunda or probably at Matola and brought through. And they've decided that's really not an economic proposition. It's just going to be too expensive 
and make uh, the fuels uh, and the chemicals business too uncompetitive. So they, they've sort of discounted that. So they're doing a number of things around also cleaning up the way they use coal, maybe using carbon capture and storage to try and extend the productive life at a, at a higher nameplate than the 6.7 million tonnes. So the worst case scenario, they're saying 6.7 million tonnes. The best case scenario is they find a way to plug that 10 million tonne coal gap that's going to emerge as they decarbonise. So Kuna is also facing another existential threat. This um, plan to decarbonise assumes that they are able to run the existing boilers in a certain way. So they'll start turning down their boilers uh, at Secunda, which are, and this is really about sulfur dioxide, not carbon dioxide. They are outside of South Africa's air quality standards on this, and they've been given until 2025 to remedy that. Now their proposed remedy is to not reduce every boiler's concentration of sulfur dioxide by, say, desulfurization technologies. That would be a very, in their view, expensive and, and exercise and wouldn't have the desired results. So Sassel's submitted another plan which would actually to produce the number of boilers in operation and therefore bring down not only this or bring down their sulfur dioxide emissions uh, into standard as well as particulate matter that comes out of these boilers as well as uh, the NOx that come out of these. So they're saying overall they'll reduce but uh, the air quality office has rejected that application because it was alternative template or methodology uh, to what is su supposedly the standard uh, methodology in South Africa. They've rejected that. So uh, Sasso has now appealed to the Minister of Environment, Barbara Creasy, to say, but we do think our solution's better. And they do, but they do note that if they can't get this, because there is no investment going into desulfurization of their boilers, uh, they are bringing in renewable energy that they've, they've contracted quite a lot and that will help. But if they can't do this, they'll actually have to shut down Secunda. So that would be uh, so what they said, uh, worst case scenario being 6.7 million tons. This what they describe as the dire scenario, where it's basically shutting down Secunda and we know there's a massive, it's a massive uh, um, economic site of production. Uh, it's an employer. Uh, there's, it's got value chains that rely on it. It's a big exporter. It earns foreign exchange for South Africa. It's a big taxpayer. So this appeal, there's going to be a lot of eyes on this appeal and whether they are allowed to, rather, rather than putting in new technologies at a constant, to reduce the concentration of sulfur dioxide, can reduce that by turning down specific boilers at Secunda. Now, if they don't get that well, that, that, then, there's a, then that's existential, I think. I, I do think believe given the economic contribution of Secunda, I do think that the, the, the government is likely to err more on the side of their, their solution than rather than shutting down. But, you know, there's going to be potential for legal action against this as well. We know that there's a lot of attention being given to South Africa's air quality, particularly on the high felt, which both Eskom and Sassel are operating outside of the standard and have been condoned for a short for a period to do it. So these two big energy businesses, uh, you know, on an air quality front, are facing serious uh, legal challenges, potentially, definitely environmental legislation, and not meeting it. So yes, this is an existential threat, but I think as, with, as with what we've seen with Eskom a little bit, there will be some sort of give, but at some point, um, uh, the, you know, the health burden associated with these facilities is catching up with us. And at some point, the, we have to have a clean-up. What does this say about South Africa and its approach to the just transition? Well, I think to the energy transition generally, I think it shows that we, if you're taking too long, you're going to start facing serious financial threats. One, you're starting to write down assets, as we've seen with uh, Sassel's Secunda, 36 billion rand write down. It, it has the added threat of maybe having to close down because it hasn't met South Africa's law in terms of air quality. So you need to move with a at a different pace and a different urgency, um, not only for, uh, for the sake of the health of the surrounding communities and of South Africans, 
But if you want to stay in business, you need compliance. And, you know, in, in Cecil's case, it is technical, it is complex transition. It was built for a different era. But there are huge opportunities to use this unique asset base that they have built, that is built on coal, to rather get the hydrogen uh, from a different source, and that source could be, uh, should be water in the form of cracking the water into hydrogen, green hydrogen, using renewable electricity to do that. And there is that mentality coming with uh, Sassel now. They've got a plan to start testing that. They've, they've applied to bid as part of this H2 Global or German scheme, which is an offtake scheme, uh, almost as a concessional or subsidized offtake scheme. And they are looking at doing that for into producing sustainable aviation fuel. So there is a, a way of repurposing this asset uh, at Secunda. But if you don't get all the other elements in place and you leave, leave these too, too long and uh, you, you are distracted, this is what can happen. You can face closure. Um, and I think this, with uh, the electricity se sector, I think there's less excuse because there, since about 2015, the trade-off between cheap and clean has no longer existed. The cheapest form of new electricity is renewable energy, even when complemented by those things that, that make the electricity available when the sun's not, uh, not shining or the wind's not blowing. Uh, even that, the, the, the science, the research, the evidence points that since about 10 years ago, that, that tipping point arose, arose. So there's less excuse there. I think Sassel, it is a more complicated story, um, but there's, the, the needs to work, move at a, at a more accelerated pace to get these solutions through. And I think the feeling is that they, they had to do this from an accounting perspective. They had to declare the risks to their shareholders. But behind the scenes, there's a lot of action taking place to try and repurpose Secunda so that it's not just a, a, a sort of a retirement and a, a remediation type story, but has a life beyond 2030 and has a life even as it approaches net zero. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.